Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see some of you here today, and I'm glad that we still have some people joining us online for service. Um, before we begin, I do want to remind everyone that we have service today at 10 o'clock, and we're still going to have service on Wednesday night as well at 6 p.m. So whichever service you feel more comfortable coming to, I'm glad to have the people here. So before we get started, Pastor Steve does have a few announcements today, uh, just kind of about how things are going to work. Good morning. Isn't it great to be in worship this morning and worship the Lord? Uh, yes, it is different this morning. And Garrick, I am going to turn my microphone on because I tend to wander. But uh, it is different. You'll notice when I'm speaking up here, as per I've seen other people do on TV and otherwise, that I'm going to take mine off. I told Clayton this morning that I'd have to have about 20 masks with about 20 different expressions, and I'd have to change the mask out so that you could see what my face was doing while I was preaching. Uh, as you know, I'm pretty animated. But yes, it is different. But we felt that socialization is needed. There are some things that they would ask us not to do, and they would ask the congregation not to sing. Well, I'm a singer. Guess what? It's going to be hard for me not to sing. Um, but we are spread out pretty well this morning, and so I think you know we might be able to do some of that. Do it softly. Don't bellow it. I'll sing, as, and, and supposedly leading it's okay, so Alicia and I will sing out this morning. Um, but they're asking us to stay socially distanced and to wear masks inside. So we'll continue to do that. As I tell people, I want to be the example. And it's not about me. It's about my congregation. And so I want to protect you. So when I'm down with you, I'm going to have my mask on. And, and I'm going to have it on other times up here other than when I'm preaching. But we're doing it for other people. And it's nothing to do with ourselves. And I want people to feel comfortable and safe to come back to worship. Things are a little bit different this morning. You'll see sanitizer, about four different spots in here if you feel the need to wash your hands. Uh, offering plates in the back and penny raider buckets in the back and up front here on either side. So that if, when you come up for communion that you will be able to put into those buckets. Uh, for communion, you will notice that your cup... Your communion cups are double cups, so you'll come forward, we'll have the tops off, you will grab your cups only, and then you'll partake of communion, and then you will drop your communion cup into the waste baskets that are provided on each side. And Alicia will be releasing people to do for com uh, communion. We ask, if you're not a family member of the people you're sitting by, to keep that six foot distance between you and that other family. But when, for example, when, when Audrey and, and Luther and Jan come up for communion, you all three can come together because you've been around each other, okay? Uh, the six foot's not important to family members, but we'll alternate rows and take communion during that time. Uh, we are trying to do this live this morning. Uh, for the first time, uh, Robin is not here, so I'm going to be pulling double duty because I haven't trained anybody else how to do this yet. But it will be available on YouTube and Facebook uh, later uh, after worship. I'm going to go home and get that on for people. So we're offering safe worship for people either via Internet or you can come here with the guidelines that we have. Uh, again, the service Wednesday will be exactly the same service except for the Wednesday folks know that the sermon will be slightly different. But the same hymns and everything so that people can either come Wednesday or Sunday. We thank you for coming to worship. We thank you for being considerate of others. Alicia will tell you what's going to be different about the kids when we do the kids. like we normally would. Um, instead, I do ask that the children stay sitting in the pew that they are in. I have created little packets with some coloring pages and some little information. They are back in the back in the little children bags. Um, for the children's sermon, I'm going to give a little, little something something up here just in the front. Kids stay where they are again. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. The same thing's going to happen on Wednesday. I'll just say a little bit, kids will stay with their parents. Just for right now, that way we're not worrying about intermingling in our small children's church room. 
So moving on with our service, we do have a couple of announcements. Um, it was decided that for the board meetings over the summer, the board meetings will be held every third Sunday after church. And as far as I know, that is still going on. So we're still going to plan on every third Sunday after church, just a short board meeting. Um, again, we have our Wednesday service, 6 o'clock. I do invite everyone to come. It's, it's great. I love the Wednesday night service because Steve does change the sermon a little bit from Sunday, so it is wonderful. <clears throat> we have, let's see. Hmm. I don't think we have any birthdays this week. Mary Armstrong's was yesterday, but no, it doesn't look like we have any birthdays and no anniversaries. I have a couple other announcements. Um, today, from 2 to 5 p.m., we are having a drive through bridal shower honk. They're getting hitched for my sister Paula and her fiancé Josh. Since things were a little up in the air, they couldn't have a normal one. Everyone is invited. It's at 215 West Union. You're welcome to come drive by, honk, wave, wish them well. Um, and their wedding is this upcoming Saturday. We're just going to have a small family affair. So just keep them in your prayers, if you don't mind, as they kind of start on their new journey in life. And with that, if everyone would please stand with me for Standing on the Promises, number 552, our opening hymn. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praise us ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail with the bowing storms of blood assail by the living water that won't prevail standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing i'm standing on the promises of god Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, ever coming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior's as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Everyone would remain standing for our call to worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Blessed be the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people who serve the God of Jacob. The Lord God has promised to be with and watch over all those who trust in and obey him. The mighty one of Israel is our God. We worship and obey him. We remember his law. We gather to thank him for all his mercies, to remember those who have given themselves for the sake of justice and truth, and to pray for his blessings to be upon us and those who rule over us. We praise and we thank the Lord our Maker. We call upon his name and ask for his peace. Glory be to the Father.
beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a time of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today thankful to be in your house of worship where you are lifted up, where you are the main focus. We thank you for the social contact that we're able to have during this time. We thank you for the peace that comes through you. Lord, we pray for our nation and the world right now as we're in turmoil over this pandemic. Lord, we pray that you would be with us, that our leadership would listen to you and be people of faith, that during this time that we would acknowledge the changes that we need to make in our lives, the things that have kept us from you. We lift up the families who have lost loved ones, both here in our community and around the world. We lift up those who have just passed recently in our community. You know their names. Now we pray as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, page number 628. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home when my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear my call, hold, all, hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, Guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. God of Israel and God of Jesus Christ, we would not be here if you had not chosen to touch our lives with your love. We cannot hide your wonder that you should choose to enter the world and our lives in person in Christ. Yet we confess that we sometimes have trouble in our decision-making when faced with questions of whether to wholeheartedly serve you or not, we are often tempted to put others than our, than, 
other than ourselves, other than you, first in our lives. When we are faced often daily with choices which affect how we live as your faithful people. Choices about how to share the gifts you have given us. Forgive us when the choices we make revolve around judging or condemning others without first listening to their stories. Forgive us when the choices we make diminish our awareness of you, O God, in the midst of those who suffer. Creating and creative God, we celebrate this wonderful world you have made. Its beauty and grandeur proclaim your glory and draw us to praise its creator. Its harmony and order proclaim your wisdom and draw us to seek understanding. Its abundance and richness proclaim your gracious providence and call us to thankful response. This bread we now break, grown from the seed of grain by the light rain and soil you have provided reminds us of your mercy to all creatures it also reminds us of the ultimate mercy the ultimate promise of life given to us in jesus christ whose name we now bless amen god of guidance and light we seek your spirit's leading we seek to know as we are known to love as we are loved to give as you have given us As this cup is poured, we remember Jesus' life being poured out in ultimate sacrifice, just as your love has been poured out into our hearts through the presence of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We would ask that Alicia will release you row by row to come and take communion. We'd ask the elders go ahead and take first, and you may return to your seats when you've done that.
guys are going to get to experience it since I don't have any kids here. So I want you to imagine. I have, well, you're right, I do. I have my bestie. Hello. All right, so I need all of you to imagine that you were with the group that Moses was leading out of, out of the Pharaoh's rule. And, you know, we're, we're going on this long journey to go to the promised land. And he, he's been leading us and leading us. You know, I'm, I'm grouchy. I don't like being outside. I don't like going on long hikes. I, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So I'm going to grumble and complain. Would you grumble and complain if you were... What about doing yard work or something that you really don't want to do? Cleaning your room? You're going to grumble and complain, aren't you? Well, at least I am. So we're grumbling and we're complaining. And... Does God want us to do that? No, just like mom and dad don't want us to grumble and complain when we're raking leaves or doing bushes and yard work with my dad or cleaning my room, something like that. Your parents get upset with you when you complain. Well, God was getting upset because everyone was complaining and he was leading them to safety. You know, he was working with Moses to do something wonderful for them. Well, there were a couple people who weren't. We have uh, Joshua and Caleb. They were doing what they were supposed to. They were being calm, cool, and collected. So God was like, all right. Just like when mom and dad say, all right, I've had enough. I've had enough. No, no Xbox, no swimming pool. None of this, because you were grumbling and complaining when I asked you to do one thing. So God, he's like, all right. Guess what? Since you all wanted to grumble and complain, you don't get to go to the promised land. Anybody over 20 year old, years old? Nope, you're out. Sorry, Moses. I know you just did all this work for me, but yeah, sorry. Everyone ruined it for you. It's just like when you're in school and, you know, you have this one kid acting up in class. Oh, guess what? Everybody loses five minutes of recess. Is that fair? No, but it happens to everyone. It's an equal punishment. So that's what happened to our friends. Even though they had done all of this work, they grumbled and moaned and groaned and complained about it. God didn't want them to do that. God said, hey, I gave you an opportunity. I helped you get here, 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 and here. I helped you guys out. And this is how you repay me. Well, we're not supposed to do that. We should do things willingly. We should want to do the things that God asks of us. So I want you to think about this as you go throughout your week, okay? We need to do the things that God has asked us without moaning and groaning and complaining about it. You might not like it, but guess what? God always has the best thing in mind for you. We're never going to see how his plan is laid out for us until we get to the end. He's secretive like that, but he knows what's best. So that's what I want you to do. Next time mom or dad or somebody asks you to clean your room, don't complain about it. They're looking out for you. Maybe they have a secret surprise for you in the end. Or maybe they just know that you do your homework better or you sleep better or you play better when your room is clean. So go throughout your week, do things without complaining, and see how much it changes your outlook on life. That's what God wants us to do, okay? Thanks. I am seeking, searching for the things this world has rejected, the things that are broken, that are flawed, thrown away and discarded. I seek the lost, the damaged, the forgotten things, the overlooked and the neglected. The things that have been pushed aside and left behind. Why? Why do I do this? Why chase after that which is despised by so many? It is because I have chosen the rejected. I bring restoration to the broken. I see beyond the flaws and the imperfections, and I bring new life to the lost. This world has called them useless and garbage, hopeless and unwanted. 
They have been scarred, abused, ignored, and unloved. But I, I have reclaimed them. And they belong to me now. They are my masterpiece. And I have a plan and a future for every single one. For I am crafting these dissonant and discarded pieces into something beautiful. I thought that was so fitting for the times that we're in right now. That God is remaking, restoring us to something of beauty. Uh, we always use clay and talk about God molding us as clay. But as a woodworker, I love it when you can take something that's been disposed of and thrown away and can be reclaimed into something beautiful. Sometimes still keeping that weathered look, but giving that new purpose that new thing for my wife will tell you that I have tons of scrap lumber around the house. How many people keep scrap lumber, scrap metal, you don't throw it away? Luther, I know you do. Yeah, we don't throw it away because there's a use for it. Somebody said, aren't you going to throw away all those old grill parts? Well, guess what? I needed them for something. I needed a metal brace or I needed something that was there. And that worked out great. But during this time, he's remaking us. He's remaking families during this time. Families are spending more time together than they have for ages. Families are reevaluating what's important. They're renewing. People's faiths are being renewed. Folks, I don't know if you know this, but we have hundreds of people that watch our videos every week. How many of you know we don't have hundreds of people that attend this church? I had somebody stop me in the street and say, I listen to three to five church services every week because now I have time. And he says, I've really enjoyed your worship services. Somebody I would not have thought. Daily devotionals that people are listening to. People are sharing scripture. What an awesome thing. And so he's renewing our spiritual lives during this time. What I chose this morning for the scripture is Joshua, the 22nd chapter. We're going to use like the first five verses. And at the, somewhere in this, you're going to say, Steve, where are you taking this? That's exactly what Alicia did to me Wednesday. She said, I've read that scripture two and three times. I have no clue where you're going. I said, well, guess what? It's someplace, it's kind of like Star Trek. I'm going to the place, the new frontier, okay? At that time, Joshua summoned the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And he said to them, you have kept all, all that Moses and the servants of the Lord commanded you and have obeyed my voice and all that I have commanded you. i got to remember, i got to stand still. I don't have somebody else following me as I'm doing this. Besides that, how many of you, it's the first time you've ever seen me preach from the pulpit? That's because i got to watch the video to make sure that everything's going right. Uh, and and uh, uh, But i got to stay in a spot. That's going to be difficult this morning. He said to them, you have kept all of Moses and the servant of God commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I've commanded you. Well, it's going to, my clicker's not used to being this far either. You see, the nation of Israel consisted of 12 tribes. Two of these tribes, Reuben and Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. They had requested before they even got to what Moses and God were going to call the promised land to stay on the other side of the Jordan River and stay there. Why? They were cattlemen. Good grazing, good water. They were content. 
Moses and God were a little afraid of this. They were afraid that if they let them have that territory, that they would not continue on the journey with the other nine and a half tribes. Kind of like us, right? We get what God wants from us. We're really not concerned about anybody else. But here we're going to find that they did something different. On their journey to the promised land. You have not forsaken your brothers these many days down to this day, but have been careful to keep charge of the Lord your God. In other words, they did what they were supposed to do. They went across the Jordan River and they helped the other nine and a half tribes conquer and fight for, the, for what God had promised them. You see, sometimes God's promises require us to take action. That's one of the other things I want you to take from this. Sometimes, yes, he just puts things in front of us, but sometimes there's going to be blood, sweat, and tears involved in us getting to where God wants us to be. They had fulfilled the promises of Moses and of God. So what did he do? And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brothers and has promised them as, as he had promised them. Therefore, turn and go to your tents in the land where your possessions lie, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. So I wanted to give you a picture of what that looked like. You can see by the picture that their land was on the right side of that map and the nine and a half were on the other side of the map, the colored sections, to give you an idea of how that was. In Joshua 22.5, he says this, Only be very careful to observe the, the command, the command Commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and keep his commandments and to cling to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. The Ten Commandments. He said, now that you've done this, you've been faithful in doing this, what I need you to do is now go back to the other side, to what he's promised you, and I need you to keep his commandments that as followers of Jesus Christ, you have said that you would do. Verse 6 says, So Joshua blessed them, and he sent them away, and they went to their tents. You're saying, Steve, that's great, the promised land. It's a great story. They were faithful. They followed their promises to God. And... They were to keep his commandments and continue to follow him, and he gave them the promised land. So how does that apply to me? Well, let's look at what the New Testament says. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hmm. So we have to accept him as our Lord and Savior, just as the Israelites accepted God as their Lord. We have to accept him, or we can't receive the promised land. Okay? You had to be part of the chosen tribes to get to the promised land. We have to be children of God in order to see the promised land that he has promised. Born again, that means that we've heard his word, we've repented, we believe, we confess, and guess what? We're baptized. Many of you here today have done that. You've accepted him. And now you are a follower. And because you are a follower, he has made a promise to you. John eleven twenty five 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, Yet shall he live again. He is the resurrection and the life. The promised land for us is the land of milk and honey, the pearly gates, 
the streets of gold that are talked about. That is the promise before us. That's what Jesus and God have promised to us. What about his commandments? Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, doesn't he? And what did he do? He gave us new commandments. Moses gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites. Jesus broke those Ten Commandments down into two parts. The first three say this. A new commandment that I give you, that you love one another just as I loved you. You also shall love one another. That's actually the last seven. But what's he say? That you shall love God with all your heart. That you'll have one love for one another. This is how they will tell you, tell that you are my disciples. I got a slide or two ahead of myself. But he says, if you love other people, people will know that you are my disciples. Hmm. So how we treat people makes a difference. That's the difference maker. He's saying in this scripture that people won't know you, you're Christians, by the words that you say. They'll know you by the love that you have for one another. How many of you believe that we need that in the world right now? That we need to show love and respect to everyone. That's what we need to do. We don't have to agree. Believe me, my wife and I don't agree on everything. But we can talk about it. And we love each other. So we respect each other. That's what he's saying. How you act will make you be known as one of my people. You're not part of the Israelite tribe. You're part of my people. Love God. Love others. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He said, go. There was action involved. There's something we have to do to receive the promised land. We have to follow his teachings. We have to follow what he tells us to do. We have to follow loving people. There's something to do. Think about it. If the Reubenites and the Gadites and, and, and uh, the other half-tribe had got their promised land, it would have been very easy for them to walk away and say, I got what I need. You can go fight your own battle. How many of us have done that in our own lives? We've only looked out for ourselves. We've signed on for this thing, but we get what we want, and as soon as we get what we want, what do we do? We bail. But what did these people do? They made a promise to God, and they went and fought the battle, so what are we supposed to do? We made a promise to God, and He's made a promise to us, and what we should be doing is going going out into the battlefield to share the love of Jesus Christ. Our battleground is a mission field. Our battleground may be people who don't like Christians. But we have a battle just like the Israelites. John 14.1 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way to where I am. Hmm. we know where he is he's gone to prepare our promised land he's gone to get your room ready and all he's asked us to do before he left was to go go and bring others with you 
Go and bring your family with you. Grow, go, and teach them the love of God. And in his words, he's saying, it's not going to be going and telling people what they're doing wrong. He didn't say that, did he? He said, go and love people and they will know you are my disciples from that. See, we live in that pointy finger world that wants to point out everything that everybody else is doing wrong. And you've heard me say this a hundred times. There's three fingers pointing back at me. My mama told me that when you point at somebody else, there's three pointing back at you. And if we're living our lives and we're renewing ourselves like that piece of wood, letting God work on us, then they will know that we are his people. And then they will want to go. It seems like some of us have been wandering through the desert for 40 years, looking for God's promise. We're saying, God, when are you going to fulfill it? In his time. In his place. On his schedule. So I'm going to ask you three reflective questions today. Are you born again? Have you, cha- have you changed? It should be changed, not change us. I'll change that before Wednesday. Are you born again? Have you changed? You see, that's the starting part. Doesn't have to be a new piece of wood, but it's got to be God's, you've allowed God to do something with that old scrappy piece of lumber called our life. Secondly, once you've accepted him and are born again, are you keeping his commandments? Jesus broke it down and said, there are two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you, I like myself pretty well. So that means I must really like other people. If I love them as I love myself. And the third question, if you've gone that far, are you going and making disciples? That's the third question. And what happens? The world changes. I love this quote. I'm not the judge, you know. God didn't tell me to go around judging everybody. No, he said go and make disciples. The end question that we want to hear, and if you've answered those three questions, that you are doing those three things, you will hear the words of Matthew 25, 21. When this life is over, you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time of worship. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask you to renew us like a junky old piece of wood. And once we're revitalized, that we would show the love that you have for everyone and that we would go and be your disciples. In your name we pray. Amen. As we conclude our service today, would you stand with me as we sing our closing hymn today? Count your blessings. Please rise. When upon life's billows you have tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, when you blessings in them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. 
Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will keep singing as the day goes by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands of gold, think that Christ has promised you his world unfold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor a home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessing angels will attend. Help and comfort give you in the journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Go now in the freedom of the gospel of Christ. Encourage one another to lead lives worthy of God. Walk together in service and humility. Let your words and your lives be one in Christ. And may the Lord of lasting love open the way before you. May the Jesus, the Messiah, be your one instructor. And may the Holy Spirit lead you on into the promised land of God's kingdom and glory. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Go in peace.